welcome to High Impact Living, the motivational speaking of Rick McDaniel, the noted author, international communicator, and senior pastor at Richmond Community Church in Richmond, Virginia. Well, again, welcome to Richmond Community Church, and whether you're joining us here at the Glen Allen campus or you're joining us online or maybe through the broadcast, the High Impact Living broadcast, it's great to have all of you here Last week we kicked off this series and talked about the positive aspects of stress, which was interesting for a lot of folks. I got a lot of feedback on that. Today we're going to talk about the negative aspects, and watching that media here this morning was powerful because I'm sure that's where some of you are, exactly where you are today. In fact, watching that just reminded you of the kind of burdens and stress that you are carrying, and the good news is that we're here to tackle that today to say, hey, what can we do about that? And what kind of strategies could we employ that could help us to lift some of these burdens and deal with some of the stress that's happening in our lives? So take out your information, guys, if you would, this purple note sheet, and, and follow along as, as we uh, <clears throat> read out of the Bible here this morning, first in the book of Philippians and then the book of Hebrews. In the book of Philippians, it's chapter 4 and verse 6. And seven. Don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. With thankful hearts, offer up your prayers and requests to God. Then, because you belong to Christ Jesus, God will bless you with peace that no one can completely understand. And this peace will control the way you think and feel. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Such a large crowd of witnesses is all around us. So we must get rid of everything that slows us down, especially the sin that just won't let go. And we must be determined to run the race that is ahead of us. <clears throat> There's a doctor named David Spiegel. He is the director of the Center for Stress and Health at Stanford University School of Medicine. Here's what he says. A good model of stress management is to be troubled... Do something about it and get beyond it. A bad model is to avoid it and let it accumulate. What we're going to do here today is give you the strategies so that you can, <clears throat> to follow his terminology, do something about it and get beyond it. Not avoid it and let it accumulate. Maybe that's why you're here today. Maybe that's why you're listening or watching today because you realize you've got to do something about the stress in your life. Maybe somebody invited you today because they know the kind of stressful things that you're going through. Whatever the case, we are here to help. We can, we can learn how to reduce the intensity of stress in our lives. And we can learn how to manage it. And that's exactly what we're going to do here in these next few moments. I'm going to equip you with the strategies that you can use so that you can reduce the intensity of stress in your life and manage the stress that you are experiencing. Donez Pace says this, stress is the trash of modern life. We all generate it, but if you don't dispose of it properly, it will pile up and overtake your life. It will pile up. Dr. Spiegel says it will accumulate. It will take over your life. Stress is the, the trash of life. It is, it's just what happens. It's, it's, it's the result of, of life. Life is challenging and difficult. As I've said before, life is a test. It is. It's a test. And we receive many tests along the way. And we have to know how to deal with it so we can pass. And that's what I want to help you to do today. Now, I noticed something as I was working on this message this week that I just thought was fascinating. But if you take the word stressed and you read it backwards, it's desserts. Isn't that fascinating? That's just to help you laugh today. Stress spelled backward is desserts. All right, that's, you know, that's just free. That is a freebie that I'm just throwing out to you on top of everything you're going to get here today. So, where do we begin? 
where would you begin in terms of stress-busting strategies? And I think that you should begin with prayer. Pray about it. First thing you ought to do, pray about it. What does the Bible say? Don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. Pray. Prayer is a powerful stress reliever. Have you been praying about the things that are stressing you out? Have you unburdened yourself to God? If you haven't, you're missing out. Pray about everything, the Bible says. Oh, I don't want to bother God. He's busy with wars and uh, poverty and all these other things. God is big enough. He can handle everything. Don't take our small, finite minds and place it on an almighty, all-powerful, all-knowing God. God can handle it. Pray about everything. If it concerns you, it concerns God. Give it to God. Listen to what the Bible says because it's really remarkable. It says this peace will control the way you think and feel. God will bless you with peace that no one can completely understand. It's almost hard to understand how you can be stressed, you can be burdened, you can have worries, and you can pray and you can give it to God, and then you receive a peace. There's a word here in the original language is Greek that the New Testament is written in, and it's the word for, for umpire or referee. And it's just like the ump says, that's a ball, that's a strike. That's a penalty. That is not. That's how the peace of God works in your life. It, it referees, it umpires your heart. Uh, that is not allowed in because that will be stressful and upsetting. That is allowed in because that will bless you and encourage you. That's how the peace of God works in our lives. But you can't have the peace. Again, just reading the scripture with thankful hearts. Make, offer up your prayers, make your request to God. Offer up your prayers, make your request to God. And by the way, those, that's repetitive now. In other words, offering up prayers and and requests to God is two words that say the same thing. And the Bible's always important to know when it repeats itself because it's extra emphasis, just like when a person repeats him or herself. It's extra emphasis. The Bible is saying, listen, offer up your prayers, make your requests known to God, and then the peace of God will come into your life. The peace of God will come into your life. You know, stress may be warning you that you've changed your focus from God to your problems. You're too problem-focused and not God-focused, the one who can solve your problems. And that happens when we don't pray. When we don't pray, we keep focused on the things that are happening and the things that are wrong. But when we pray, our focus is on God and how God can solve the problems and the things that are wrong. It's a huge difference. Turn your worries into prayers. Worry less, pray more. Worry less, pray more. Offer up your request and prayers to God, and God's peace will come into your life in a way that you can't understand. It doesn't make any normal, natural sense, and it will control the way, and again, the way you, what? Think and feel. The peace of God will control your thinking and your feelings. You will feel less stress. You will think less about your problems because God will give you a peace even though you are dealing with stressful situations. Try it. Try it. If you haven't tried it before, try it. Or if you've tried it a little, try more prayer. Not less prayer, but more prayer. I think sometimes we take ourselves and our problems too seriously, and we don't take God seriously enough. We put so much focus on the stressors and we forget to focus on the one who can take care of what is stressing us. That would be a good amen opportunity. It's true. Pray about it. Offer up your prayers to God. Great stress reliever. 
Well, what else, Pastor Rick? Set clear boundaries. Set clear boundaries. Establish boundaries in your life. When we say yes to too many things, it becomes too stressful. No one can do everything. Some of you don't like to say no. You need to learn to say no. No, I won't be able to do that. No, I won't be able to go to that. No, I won't be able to help with that. Now again, certainly your life should not be filled with no's, but there are times when you just can't add anything more onto your plate. And the only way to deal with that is to have boundaries and say, I'm going to have to say no. I just, I'm not going to be able to do that. Some of you, even as I'm saying this, you're just cringing inside. You just don't want to do it. You just, you don't, well, what are people going to think? What are they going to think about me if I say that? And that, by the way, is uh, something called people-pleasing. The people-pleasing virus. And here's the problem with people-pleasing. You can never please everyone. This is, the, this is what's so demonic, and I choose the word exactly right. This is what's so demonic about people-pleasing. If you try to please everyone, you never can. So it's, it's an absolutely self-defeating experience. You'll constantly be trying to do it. You'll constantly come up short. What we should try to do is please God. When we please God, we'll please a lot of people, but we won't please everyone. I've learned this through years and years of leadership. It would be great if everybody agreed, if everybody was happy, if everybody was on the same page, if everybody got along. But I'm just here to tell you 30 years of leadership, it's not like that. It's, that's not reality. That's not the way the world operates. So it's not about getting everybody to agree. It's not about everybody being happy. It's about doing the right thing. And hopefully the majority of people, the vast majority, will be up for it. But some won't, and that's okay. It's okay. Because people-pleasing is when you're controlled by other people's needs. And that is a prescription, friends, for a stress-filled life. I'm going to say that again. People-pleasing is when you're controlled by other people's needs. And that is a prescription for a stress-filled life. If your life is being controlled by the needs of others constantly, you are going to be in a constant state of stress. Boundaries are important. Now, part of setting boundaries is clarifying your own priorities. You clarify your priorities so that you can have clear boundaries. So, because no one likes a capricious person now, you know, it's yes this time, it's no that time, it's no this time, it's yes this time, and people are like, what's going on here? You need to know what are your priorities. And that helps you to establish wh where your boundaries lie. Priorities or pressure? Priorities or pressure? You decide. Which way do you want your life to go? Priorities lead to clear boundaries. Lack of priorities leads to no boundaries, unclear boundaries, which leads to increased pressure in your life. And let's just touch for a moment on a part of boundaries in modern day living. And that has to do with technology. Boundaries are not just about your relationships with other people. Boundaries are about your relationship with technology. You have to have some clear boundaries. I don't know how long back this was, but I know that I was in a conversation with my wife, and, and, you know, a significant conversation, and my wife's phone went off for a text, and my wife turned to go to get the phone. I said, please stop what you're doing. Tell me that in the middle of me communicating with you like a good husband is supposed to do, 
please tell me you are not about to grab your phone and look at some text that you're receiving from who knows who. There's no one more important than me, and there's a conversation that we're having, and whatever text you're receiving can wait. And some of you need to say that to your spouse. Because your communication is being hindered because the almighty phone is ruling your life. Scientists are now studying addiction, talking up as crazy as it may sound, an addiction to our phones. We have become addicted to them. They sit right next to us where we sleep. Your phone should be turned off. It should be sitting in another part of the house. There's no reason to bring your phone into the bedroom with you. There's no reason to leave it on. None of that. All that is is opportunities for stress. Anyone want to say amen to this? Some of you say it with gritted teeth. I, I can tell. I run, Pastor Rick. I hate it when you're right. It's true. It's not just me that's right, by the way. This is what the, this is what the social scientists are telling us. We need to unplug. Texting, emailing, social media. Let's just, just for a moment, and there's so much to talk about today, but just for a moment. How many of you have been having a pretty good day, then you get on social media, and all of a sudden, you're unhappy? You were happy. You weren't stressed. Then you get on social media, you read this, and you see this, and that, and it changes your whole demeanor. That couldn't even have happened 20 years ago. But it's happening today. So the boundaries, having boundaries, clear boundaries, has become more important than ever if you're going to manage your stress properly. Think about it. How can you Set boundaries in your life that will help you with your stress. Here's another strategy. Manage your expectations. Oh, man, this is, in, in preacher school, they talk about we point one finger at people and three point back at us. So this would be one of these Pastor Rick three back at us things. I'm, I'm an expectations guy, so this is a hard one for me, but I'm going to share it with you because it's true. Maybe you can learn from my mistakes. Things cannot always go your way. I love winning and I hate losing. Hate it. I want things to always go the way I think that they should go. I want things to always end up victorious. But life is filled with challenges, failures, and defeats. Anyone want to say amen? It's true. It's true. And even if you get on a nice winning streak, and man, I've been on a few of them in my life, it's nice, it's sweet, but it never lasts forever. It never lasts forever. You're going to be in a constant state of stress if you don't manage your expectations about life. About the inherent challenges and difficulties that life presents about the complexity of life and about how things don't just touch you, but they touch those you love. So that even if things are okay over here or things are even really good here, they can be not so good over here. And that's just the nature of life. And if we don't manage our expectations about life, we're just going to constantly be stressed out. You have to avoid this temptation toward perfectionism, this idea that, no, everything's just got to be perfect. I believe in striving for excellence, always have, always will. It's one of the core values of this church. Excellence honors God and inspires people. It honors God and inspires people. That's what we should always shoot for. But we can't always reach it, sometimes for things outside of our control. And if you can't manage that, you're just going to be so unhappy and overly stressed. Don't let 
circumstances cause you to lose hope. There are going to be disappointing things that happen in life. People are going to let you down. I've been going through something here recently with someone that I really care about, think highly of, and, and it's really been tough to just watch what's happened. Even from afar. It's brought stress into my life. Even though it's not a direct impact on me. It is, it does impact me. But I can't control that. Health issues are, wow, you know, the things that have happened in our church with people being sick has just been really challenging. I, I, I felt it in a way that I have never felt the burden before. And it is challenging to deal with. But these bodies of ours are not bulletproof. They're not going to last forever. And though we would love for everyone to be healthy and to live long lives, realistically, that's not possible. Those are hard words to come out of my mouth, by the way. I say them with gritted teeth myself. But it is part of managing one's expectations. And so you have to be able to do that. Or you will be so burdened by stress and anxiety that you will not be able to be the person that God created you to be. Here's another strategy. Have life balance. And by life balance, I mean the rhythm of life. Work, rest, play. Work, rest, play. Work, rest, play. This is the rhythm of life. Whenever this gets out of balance, stress will always increase. I had to chuckle, really. As I was working on this message, I do a lot of my work on my messages on Thursdays. It's a study day. I don't, I don't go into the office, so I don't have meetings. I stay in my study, and I work. And I'm working on this message. Now, Thursday, I had been invited to this golf outing. And uh, I don't know, maybe, Pastor Kevin, maybe somebody else was there and some other people that he may have recruited from the church. And I was just sitting there thinking, they're outside. It's finally stopped raining. And they're outside, you know, having a nice day and I'm here working. That's not fair. But that's the way it goes this week. But if that keeps happening and there's no rest and there's no recreation, it's, it's not going to be a good thing. Exercise is crucial to the release of tension. You know what else is crucial? How about, get ready, embarrassment alert, sex, married couples. Sex is a marvelous stress reducer. In fact, I'm going to just... Just touch on it here right now, and then I think I'm going to save the rest for next week's message. So come back, and you get to hear more about that. That is a good commercial. All right. Your body must be cared for. Diet, exercise, rest. You can't just wear yourself out. And again, it's so funny how things go, you know, how God just sort of works, because I'm entering a, about a three-week season here now where I have an enormous, I have like an incredible number of meetings to do in the next three weeks. I have to travel to Washington this week. I have all these number of things that have to be done. And even in the midst of that, I have to remind myself, still got to eat right, still got to get rest, still have to get to the gym and work out. And, and this, of course, is what happens is we feel stressed and then we start you know, eating poorly. Well, you're the one who said the uh, backwards of stress is desserts, Pastor Hank. I never knew that, but now I do. Eating poorly. You know, I don't have time to exercise. I, I'm going to have to squeeze in less sleep here. And these are temptations, and sometimes in short seasons you have to do those things. But long term, it won't work. You have to take time to relax to recreate, to rest. And then you can rejuvenate. 
and that is what breaks the cycle of stress in your life. And some of you are like, yeah, well, I just don't know how I'm going to do that, Pastor Rick, because of all the things that are going on in, in my life. And all I can say is, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. There's a way to do that. It can be done. I'm just, I just have come to the point now in, in leadership and just working with so many people that I just believe I could help anyone find the time to do the things that they need to do. So I just really believe that time ends it up being wasted that can be used if you really want to. And you should really want to because this is how you keep stress from accumulating in your life. There's so many negative impacts of stress on both the physical body and the mental. So many negatives. Cardiovascular disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, depression, phobias. Man, it's bad. You don't want this in your life. And if you've got to adjust your schedule, you've got to adjust your schedule. You've got to do whatever you can. Here's a strategy, and it's a good one. And it ties a little bit into last week, but from a, a little different direction. Find the positive. Find the positive. Last week we talked about the positives of stress. Here I'm talking about when you're in negative stress, still looking for the positives in each and every situation. Trying to find what is positive even in negative things. And if you look for them, you'll be amazed how many times you can find them. But you have to look for them. If you don't look for them, and all you do is let all the negatives just dominate your view, you've got to push some stuff aside. You've got to peer a little more. You've got to look a little deeper. But you can find it. Part of finding the positive is not taking each and every obstacle thrown your way personally. This idea that, you know, things should always go your way. Things should always go my way. That's just not, that's just not a mature way of looking at life. When you came in today into the Glen Island campus here, you received one of these Q-tips. Really fancy wooden Q-tip. Oh yeah, only the best for this church. So, some of you are like, what are they saying to me today? My ears need to be cleaned out. Uh, what's going on here? Here it is. Q-tip. Quit taking it personally. Maybe carry this around in your purse or in your wallet or in your pocket. Just as a reminder, quit taking it personally. The world is not out to get you. Everybody is not after you. Everybody is not a jerk. Of course there are jerks, but not everybody. There's various interactions you have in life. It's not that the world is set up, or as people like to say, the universe I don't know what that means, but the world is not set up, you know, like coming after you. Things happen, and they're stressful, and you're not happy about them. But quit taking it personally. Don't take everything as something that's directed totally at you. Everything is not a 10. On a scale of 1 to 10, you know, sirens. Warning, don't blow things out of proportion and make things worse than they really are. I'm not in any way now trying to, don't be offended or think that I'm trying to downplay what you're dealing with. You may be dealing with very stressful and serious things, but not everything is serious and super important. Amen? Can we agree with that? And some things that happen, that this is my little rule, you can borrow it if you'd like. I never, ever want to react quickly and respond quickly to things that happen. I'm always amazed that even if I wait a day, 
It just doesn't seem as bad as it seemed yesterday. Sometimes things even work themselves out. Those of you that are parents, there can be this kind of stressful response to things that happen with your kids. And it's amazing how, given some time, a lot of that will work itself out, or it will never be as bad as you thought it was. So instead of getting so worked up, and, and, and taking everything so personally, just being able to say, okay, give it some time. We'll see what happens. Things have a way of working out. Things have a way of changing. A, a right attitude can convert a negative stress into something positive. It can. It absolutely can can these are not every strategy that you could use but they're they're a good start to help you to deal with the things that are happening in your life i hope you can appreciate as a pastor the things that come my way and they are just significant and very serious sometimes when we sit down and we go over the prayer cards at the pastor's prayer team i'm just blown away by the enormous problems and difficulties that are happening in people's lives or people's lives that those in this church care about. And it's significant. But not everything is that significant. And even those things that are significant can be managed better if we practice some of these principles and put into practice some of these strategies. And if you'll do it consistently over time, I believe you will see your stress level come down. There's no way to remove or eliminate stress. But there is a way to manage it better. There, there is a way to be able to, to maybe take some of the intensity of the stress off so that life is better and happier. Pastor Rick will return in just a moment with closing words of encouragement. Before he does, I wanted to remind you about our webpage, www.highimpactliving.com. It's your resource for a high-impact life. Let's pray together. If you just bow your heads with me for just a moment. Lord, I just, just pray for each and every person here today. I don't know what they might be going through. Some that are watching or listening on the broadcast or one of the other campuses, and they're just dealing with things. Who knows what it might be? could be something very significant financially or health-wise. could be a very serious relationship situation, maybe something in the family. And there could be all kinds of other stresses at work, other things that are happening in a person's life. And I just pray that you will help them to, first and foremost, pray about it. Give it to you that you might bless them with peace. Help them to use some of these other strategies. Strategies that can bless their life and can reduce their stress. Help them to see that not everything is some kind of a personal affront. That bad things and challenging situations visit all of us. Help us to have the kind of proper attitude that we need to have. And I certainly pray that in all these stressful situations that you will work, that you will work things out for the good. And I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for coming today.